Yo, 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 what's poppin'? I'm Jacques Slade, and welcome to The Heat Check, where we talk about all of the week's releases. Okay, let's start with one of our picks of the weeks, and it's the return, really, of an icon. It's the Fenty Puma Avanti Age Silver and Black and White. These are gonna be on the 15th for 170. So Rihanna's return to the sneaker world has her fans all hyped up. And first out of the gate is the classic Avanti silhouette, which is itself a hybrid of sorts, taking the style of the Puma Kings soccer boot and pairing it with the tooling of the Easy Rider Runner. Personally, I'd love to own the black and white pair because it's got such a timeless look to it and the history behind them is actually pretty cool as well. What I am going to be super curious to see is if Rihanna still has the same juice in the sneaker world that she did back in the middle to late 2010s, especially since this one is priced a little more than the Creepers were. We also have the Adidas Gazelle Off-White, Dark Blue, and Burgundy. These are on the 11th for 100. We have a grade school Air Jordan 1 Mid Teddy Bear on the 12th. We have another grade school. This is the Air Jordan 4 Teddy Bear on the 12th for 150. Also available in little kid sizes for 85 and infants for 70. I actually wonder how this pair would do if it ever came out in larger sizes. There's not inherently anything kids about them. If anything, they look like a colorway that's meant to be worn outdoors on a trail or something. Um, then we also have the uh, women's Air Jordan 1 High. This is the praline colorway on the 13th for 180. The Broken Arm Salmon X Al Pages GTX. I don't know how to say. I don't know how to say that. I'm trying to read it here. Uh, those are on the 13th for 220. Uh, the Broken Arm I know is a fashion boutique that's worked with Salmon on a number of releases. This latest features a metal that can be pinned on the tongue and has embroidery that resembles a traditional walking stick. And with the use of Gore-Tex, this one is definitely designed to take a beating from the elements. Then we have the uh, Jordan Luca 2 Lake Bled. This is on the 14th for 140. The Nike Mac Attack in white and black, those are going to be $120. It looks like this one got moved back a week after we featured it uh, on the last episode. Uh, the women's Nike Dunk Low Next Nature, this is floral tapestry on the 14th for 110. The women's Nike Dunk Low Twist Rush Fuchsia, that's going to be on the 14th for 120. Then my next pick of the week is the Puma MB03 Le France or Le Francais, I don't know. This is on the 14th for 125. So did you know that Lamella Ball has a clothing brand called Le France or Le Francais? I did not know that until this collaboration with Puma that also includes an RSXL that's dropping on the same day. By the way, I took a look at the La France website and it's, well, it's good that Lamello is trying to spread his wings, I guess. If you ever see me wearing this mask with the kid's face on it, things are going either really well, like I'm creative director at Puma working alongside friend of the program Clyde Edwards, AKA Snickerbox Clyde, or things are not going well and I'm doing my best Bodie from Point Break impersonation using a LaMelo mask instead of a Reagan mask because, oh, hell no. Um, Speaking of the RSXL, uh, that's on the 14th as well. We have the undefeated Converse weapon Chive. This is going to be a Converse.com release, and it's on the 14th for 140. We have uh, the also Castle Wall colorway. That's going to be on the 14th for 140 as well. We have a women's Adidas Addy Zero SL Light Aqua on the 15th for 120. We have the Adidas Addy Zero Boston 12M Lucid Cyan on the 15th for 160. We have the Adidas Addy Zero Prime X2 Strung. These are on the 15th. For for 300. Heads up if you're an elite runner watching this fine program, the Adidas Addy Zero Prime X2 Strung, hell of a name there, is not allowed for top level running competition. That's because the stack height of these runners are 50 millimeters and currently races only allow for a maximum stack height of 40 millimeters. You probably already knew that elite runner watching the heat check, but if you're looking to push the limits, well, this one might be for you. We have the Needles A6 EX89 white and black. Those are going to be on the 15th. So uh, this low-key collaboration between A6 and Japanese brand Needles is one that revels in the simplicity. Purple ties the black and white colorways together as the stitching throughout the upper creates a, I would say like wavy, almost comic book-like look. We have the women's Nike Dunk Low Total Orange. This is actually going to be a restock and that's going to be on the 15th for 120 bucks. The women's Nike Cortez World Make, this is gonna be on the 15th for 110. The women's Nike Air Max 186 World Make, this is a Korea exclusive. Those are on the 15th for 170. The Nike SB React Leo, white and black, that's gonna be on the 15th for 95. And then the other pick of the week is the Reebok ES22 Club Blue on the 15th for 180 bucks. 
Uh, for you old school folks, this is a retro of Emmett Smith's signature shoe, the ES22. It returns in the OG Club blue colorway, but with a slight change, the original pair came with translucent outsole, while this 2023 retro gets a black outsole. Kind of a weird choice considering how much Reebok Classic loves to put translucent outsoles on a lot of their retros. Anyways, shout out to this particular colorway's most memorable moment back in 2000 when Smith ran to the center star of Cowboy Stadium to retaliate after Terrell Owens posed on the star when he scored a touchdown. Not gonna lie, as a football fan, I've always respected Emmett for being one of the GOAT running backs and for sticking it to T.O., but as a San Francisco 49ers fan, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, man. All right. Anyway, uh, next up, we have the Nike Zoom GT Hustle 2 Transcend Time. This is on the 15th for 170. No, you're not actually seeing things. This is not a retro of the Nike Zoom Telaria. It's a new colorway of the GT2 Hustle 2 that's inspired by Telaria. Probably why the nickname is Transcend Time, I guess, maybe. Uh, we have another colorway of that shoe, the Fundamentals. This is on the 15th for 170. The Adidas Gazelle Indoor Core Black, almost yellow, and as well as a bright blue and core black. These are on the 15th. They're 120 bucks each. And looks like Adidas is making gazelles a thing after the Sambas popped off. I'm not, not mad at that. Speaking of gazelles, we have the Women's Adidas Gazelle Core Black Metallic Silver and the Arctic Fusion Silver Metallic. These are on the 15th. They're 100 bucks each. And yeah, I think this gazelle thing is going to be a thing. Yeah, we have the uh, women's gazelle boots in silver, green, and maroon on the 15th for 130. Are we pinning all of this on Harry Styles wearing gazelles for his tour? Is that what this is about? That's unbelievable. Did not realize Styles was that big of a sneaker influencer for the casual fan base. Corporate has our Nike Airship. This is gonna be a restock on the 15th for 150. The Adidas Crazy 8, AKA the KB81. This is in the Knicks colorway on the 16th for 150. And I have to say, this is a super funky colorway of the late Kobe Bryant's first signature shoe. Kind of shows you how hard it is to turn this pair into something that's lifestyle ready. You can't blame Adidas for trying though. No. We have the Terra Squad Nike Air Force Low. This is going to be in the black and white colorway for 150. And no word if little baby got these as he tries to catch up to Joey Crack. Anyway, my pick of the week, the Nike ISPA Link Access on the 12th for 300. Now, if you don't know by now, I, Jacques Slade, have a soft spot for Nike's weirdo line of sneakers, AKA the ISPA line. Not that other brands don't get experimental with certain silhouettes, but there's something about the esoteric nature of the ISPAs and how they look so puzzling at first glance that I'm just kind of drawn to them for reasons that I can't explain. And the ISPA Link Access is another one. It contains 100% recycled polyester flyknit and the TPU tooling uses material from scrap airbags. The modular nature of the shoes means that you can conceivably take them apart and replace them with new pieces if one part of the shoe is wearing down. Of course, the slight problem with that is what happens when a piece does fall apart and you need to find the replacement. Is Nike going to sell that piece individually or will I need to buy another pair of ISPA Link Accesses just to get that part that I need? It's a lot to think about, but it's something that I hope Nike has contingencies for in the future if the concept behind these sneakers start to make their way into more mainstream product. All right. That's gonna do it for this, yeah, that'll do it for this week's heat check. Uh, be sure to check out other features here on the channel and our weekly show Hard Pass, which recently moved to its own channel. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. All right, some faces here.